The wilderness. For the uninitiated, it's easy to forget that these beautiful, untrammeled retreats hold great power. They give and take life without warning. Some find a sense of purpose in challenging these wilds. They love the thrill of facing the unknown and cheating death. Nature carries an inherent threat every time we place ourselves in its hands, and the results can prove deadly. Hello, I'm Bill Curtis. In this program, three remarkable stories of survival in the wilderness, as adventurous souls test the limits of our ability to endure the wrath of Mother Nature. A blistering heat wave strands a hiker for six days in the Grand Canyon. Two experienced mountain climbers trapped in a winter hurricane battle for their lives. And 50 firefighters are caught in the path of rampaging wildfire. Those who face the worst that the wilderness has to offer and come out alive know their survival is as arbitrary as it is unexplained. The Grand Canyon is the most majestic natural setting in North America, but its beauty belies a danger that hides behind every turn. Some of the trails leading into the Grand Canyon follow the same paths that were made by Anasazi Indians nearly 2,000 years ago. They left artifacts scattered throughout the area and named the canyon Kaibab, meaning mountain lying down. In July 1994, a 62-year-old screenwriter named Bill Lederer went on a wilderness excursion. His destination? A camping trip into the Grand Canyon. Lederer saw the journey as a spiritual test. I heard that was for more experienced uh, hikers, and uh, I wouldn't be uh, inundated with uh, fellow uh, tourists and I thought I'd get away from it all and uh, be on my own and I uh, was looking forward to the adventure give me some experience uh, uh, bringing me closer to nature Lederer who reenacted his journey for this program planned to spend several days at the bottom and packed as much food and water as he could carry from 7,000 feet on the south rim of the Grand Canyon the air seemed comfortable but he was hiking in the midst of a heat wave when temperatures reached 130 degrees at the bottom. The ranger warned me just to go down for an hour. And I told him, uh, well, uh, I was going to meet some people down halfway uh, at a campground. This was not true, but I wanted to make the trip. He warned me that the temperature was too hot. And I said, well, listen, uh, I'm a marathon runner. I can do this easily. And he says, well, this ain't no marathon. Watch yourself. If you don't come back by Sunday, we're sending the posse after you. You walk 20 or 30 minutes down one of those trails, and you're essentially in the wilderness. And, and uh, it's, uh, it's something people don't realize. They think, well, all I have to do is, is yell for help, and somebody will come along. But uh, backcountry rescue is never instant. It never happens quickly. I don't think I was mentally prepared. I always thought that, well, this jaunt down the Grand Canyon was, you know, seven, eight miles. I, I run that in a weekend. As Lederer progressed down the trail, the temperature went up considerably. Four hours later, he collapsed from heat exhaustion. I could hardly breathe. So I put my head between my legs and my hands over my hat and just made as much shade out of my own body as possible. 
And uh, a strange thing happened at that time. I started to feel cold and I, I was shaking all over and I thought, I'm going into shock. Ludwer considered heading back up the trail, but the sun was relentless. He sensed his body shutting down and began to wonder if he would survive. My first instinct about it was, well, you know, death isn't bad. At least I'm going to be cool. And then I got a second thought out. I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to die. And I thought, oh, my daughter's wedding is in 10 days. And I said, God, God, I'm a fool. Please let me live. Please. I'll do anything. Lederer began to hallucinate. He had not seen another hiker since early that morning. Suddenly, in the middle of the trail, he thought he saw a Native American woman. She was looking up the mountain, and uh, my first feeling about this was, well, this has got to be an hallucination. I got about 15 feet from her, and the image dissipated, and I looked into the terrain for some markings that may have given me this illusion. Instead, I saw a uh, stream about 100 yards straight down. It was only a trickle in the middle of the canyon floor, but it seemed an oasis to Lederer and energized his spirit. As night fell that first day, the hiker was too terrified and upset to sleep. The next morning, he anxiously started up the trail, but again, the heat was unbearable. It was so bad from about 12 to 2 o'clock that I can remember just keeping my nose close to the running water for, for air. Uh, it was like, uh, if I weren't in that position, it was like my head would be in a, an oven and I couldn't get the air into my lungs. It was so thick. Every bone in my body was aching, uh, but mostly my back. And so I stayed hunkered down. Uh, my skin was very dry, even though I was constantly dousing myself. Uh, I also remember my eyesight. Everything was blurred all the time and uh, I attributed that to some kind of dehydration, too. Despite his deteriorating physical condition, Ledwer considered making a second attempt to hike out when the sun went down. I was tempted at nighttime to climb up the Grand Canyon, thinking that it was cooler, I could make it. But what deterred me from doing something like that was the fear of falling off the cliff. It was so easy to do. I had stumbled a few times.